How's it guys? Welcome to Easy Trade RC. Today I'm going to show you how to build a 29cc engine. Um, we've stripped a 26cc and we're converting it to a 29cc. So we've got the new 29cc parts here, head, crankcase, piston, ring, and then the old parts from the 26cc will be the crank, coil, flywheel, clutch, clutch housing, clutch carrier, the manifold. So all those comes from your old engine and it uses the same length crank for the 26 as it does for the 29. Okay, we're going to start off with the crankcase and we need to get that uh, crank inside. When you split your crankcase into the two sections, be very careful of these pins sticking out here. They help you seat the crankcase and they are loose, so they can come out and, and go missing. Uh, the next thing when you want to put in your crank through the, the bearing and the seal, make sure that you put it the right way around. It's the same thickness both sides and make sure you know which side is your flywheel side and which side is your clutch side. The flywheel screws onto the threaded piece and the clutch screws inside, the clutch carrier screws inside the crank on this side. So we want to go through that way. What I do is I use a little bit of uh, grease and I just put a little bit of grease on the crank so that once it comes through this um, seal here, it is slick. It slides easily because the, the metal tends to grip the rubber seal. Okay, so now we just slide that through nice and smooth. Make sure that your um, con rod goes up. That's it, sitting nice through there. And then we want to sink this in so we don't lose those pins. <clears throat> sink this into this side, but don't forget the gasket. So even the gasket has little sections for those pins. So now we sink that into that bearing there. Hold on to the crank. Go through the bearing. Do not damage the gasket. And then we have success. All right. So now the, the crank gasket has is solid. So this we will cut off later. It's just to keep it in the right shape. So that you do not lose shape when you when you do this when you clamp it down. Um, next, you want to see that it, it sits nice. Okay, it's nice and solid in there, um, nice and smooth. This will wear in as you break your engine in. It's quite tight at the moment because the seals are brand new. Keeps everything inside that needs to stay inside. Next up, we drop these screws inside and tighten it all up. When we tighten up the screws, remember to go crisscross. Do not use a torque wrench on these bolts. You do not need to over tighten them. Tightening them by hand is more than enough. The gasket will do its job. <clears throat> okay. Everything's still moving around. Um, next up, what we want to do is get the head on here and the piston with the bearing and everything. So what I've done with the piston before is you get these two little um, C-clips that goes either side of your gudgeon pin, your needle. So the one I've already installed. And when you install them, you got to make sure when you hold them that the tail follows you. You do not want to push the tail into the into the hole. You want the tail to follow you. Okay, so for now, we're not going to do that until the piston is on top of there. The one thing you need to remember is which side is which of this engine. Because on your piston, you'll have a little arrow or you'll have this little gap. This gap, most of the time, faces your inlet. The arrow will always face your exhaust. So with your flywheel on this side, you're going to pull the pull start this side, your exhaust is on that side, so the arrow needs to point that way. Make sure you remember that. You don't want to install and then strip the engine apart again. Okay, I'm going to take this piece of gasket off here, and I just use my Stanley knife so that I can get a nice, smooth um, cut, and it doesn't interfere with the head gasket. Okay, take that off, and then make sure that you smooth it out. 
make sure you take all that little pieces of paper off but do not scratch this top piece obviously that will be a no no okay so let's cut off gasket the ceiling nicely next up we can start fitting the piston all right um you want to stick your your bearing in there and then either side of this needle bearing you've got two washers it comes with the piston set these two washers goes in like that and then your piston slides over like that okay i'm going to turn it around because my needle bearing or my needle my gudgeon pin is going to go in from the other side make sure to remember which side is your arrow Okay. Line everything up, push that needle, that gudgeon pin through, make sure that all the washers and everything is in place, and then just push it all the way through. I use this, which will not touch the piston, but it's big enough to push the gudgeon pin through. So now I need to put the other c-clip in there c-clip is that side i needed to put another one in there make sure you seat the c-clip properly if you do not it will come out while you're driving and pa explosion all right i grip i grip it like this because i'm going to turn right i turn my hand as far left as possible i'm going to turn right and let the the tail as i said the tail is going to follow here's the tail it follows me it doesn't go in first okay shove that in there and turn okay didn't go in the first time there we go pin is in cool piston is going nowhere all right piston is in it's in the right direction next up you can put on your ring <coughs> the ring can flex a little bit but do not bend your ring just stretch it enough to go over the piston okay make sure that the gap sits on this pin side there's a little pin on your piston there which you can close you're gonna push it closed later to get it into this head okay next up that's what we want to do um, it's also important to look at your gasket when your gasket goes on it can only go on one way if you turn it around paper or whatever copper will stick in the way there and, and mess around with your porting the gasket can only go one way make sure you put the gasket on that way all right so stick it on your on your engine look which side is is the thinnest of your your seating there and put the gasket on accordingly not like me now shopping back and through okay so it goes over all the holes like that and it doesn't mess around with my porting at all okay now the difficult part is getting this head on without damaging your gasket in the interim because the gasket has to now sit there what i do to put the piston on there i use cheap two stroke like garage two stroke and um, i just rub it around the, the new ring and piston so that i protect the inner layer of this sleeve i do not want to go in there raw just get some nice oil around there you do not want to go in there raw and the garage stuff seems to be a little bit thicker than the 100 percent synthetic okay next up we want to close this gap here and make sure you got your head the right way around which side is the exhaust the exhaust is facing that way okay so your exhaust port faces that way intake that side Okay, close that ring and then what I do is I push the intake first there where I close that ring I push it first and then I I slide it over so that the head kind of holds the ring closed there while I seat it at the back once the ring is in you should have joy And hopefully you get it right a lot faster than me okay 
Okay, a good indicator when you push this piston into your sleeve now, if you've got that hole right, is when you push it past your intake, you will actually see that little pin and you will see the gap on your ring being closed right over that pin. So you know that you, you've done the job right. What I like to do at this point is drop my crank all the way to the bottom so that I do not have to push the head all the way down or so far down before I can seat this gasket because now you you could damage the gasket if you don't put it in properly okay there we go cool heads on piston is in piston is the right way around next up head bolts and the head bolts comes with your new cylinder head just drop them in there and then screw them on gently just do like three or four threads okay I'll show you now why and just make sure that they get the hole sometimes your gasket might be in the way so just wiggle your head a little bit back and forth until you can get that hole now this one doesn't want to listen to me let's just try this so. okay three of them went in properly and then the fourth one okay so now all of them are just screwed in a little bit now you want to see that everything sits nice okay your head can't move left and right too much make sure your gasket sits in the right place everything like that make sure that um, once you've taken two of them all the way to the bottom holding the cylinder onto the crankcase I'll show you now I just loosely screw on two of them And then I turn the crank to make sure that the piston doesn't bottom out and stuff like that. Like you've used the wrong crank or stuff like that. So now the piston is turning inside the cylinder all the way to the bottom, all the way to the top. That's it. Perfect. Now we can go on and tighten the bolts properly <clears throat> before you have to tighten them and strip the whole thing again. Okay. You're going to need the correct tool for this, a long allen key, but a proper allen key like this does work. You're going to have to put quite a bit of force on it um, with the short side. So you can either use a small spanner or what I tend to use is my little uh, socket wrenches like this. Just stick it on the top of the allen key like that. So you've got more strikes, more, more um, torque on it and then tighten them crisscross. Once again, all you need is for those bolts not to come loose and for the gasket to seat. You do not need to use a torque wrench on your head. There we go. Nice and, and together. And when you turn it, everything goes down and up. Nice and smooth. That's beautiful. I love what it. What you will need is a piston locking tool. Mine has been through some trial and error. Uh, it's not supposed to have that hole in it, but this does the job. It's the proper thread for your head. Do not try and use a normal bolt. You will strip, strip this thread and break your engine. Okay, firstly what you want to do is turn your piston so it's further down. So you don't put extra strain on it. Then turn your piston locking tool in all the way. And as you're going to be turning clockwise, then turn it clockwise until it locks onto that tool. Don't leave a gap. Next up, you want to seat this key. This is your flywheel key. Put it into your crankcase gap of your crank gap on the flywheel side and next up line up your flywheel your flywheel has a little slot there that slot must go right over that key make sure that you do this right if you do not do this right you can look through these holes here to make sure that you slot it properly if you do not do this right the timing of your engine will be off and you will not get it started next up you got a flywheel locking nut 13 mil I have seen some with a 12 mil socket um, 12 mil nut but most of them are 13 mil and make that nice and tight you do not want your flywheel to come off <clears throat> the crank is tapered so as you tighten it up it will uh, 
pull the flywheel on and hold it in place but yeah this you can put quite a bit of force on it you do not want it to come off it will cause all kinds of havoc okay nice and tight everything turns nicely next up we want to put on your um, clutch housing clutch housing just slides nicely into the slot here sits there and bolt it down with your bolts okay next up if you do not have bolts that came with your kit and you want to use your own bolts look at this the bolts coming in to tighten your crankcase on this side um, goes into the same holes as this clutch casing if you're going to use two long bolts either side they are going to touch on the inside and you're going to strip this thread make sure that both bolts do not touch each other as you can see this clutch housing bolts are quite short they are just enough to grip the thread and hold this tight this is not a movable part it does not have to be tight like a flywheel literally just a short bolt like that will hold it in place Once again, as I said, just tighten this side enough to hold the housing in place. Do not have to lock tight or anything on this side. It's not a movable part. It just protects the user if the clutch has to break or come loose or come out or something like that. Next up, clutch mount, also tapered, goes onto a tapered side of the crank. And also make sure you tighten this nice. Do not put Loctite on this. People who try to remove this thing afterwards and you Loctite it will have all kinds of trouble. And then they will end up breaking stuff, drilling out the crank and stuff like that. And then the crank might need replacing. Just nice and tight, no Loctite needed. Okay, next up clutch you've got two washers at the bottom of your clutch and two bent thin washers at the top of your clutch and uh, that makes sure that the the bolts stay in place so the two thicker washers goes at the bottom this is the old clutch we took off the previous engine just line it up make sure that your washers fall in place and then get the right allen key and just Screw it in once or twice, make sure everything lines up. Okay, the right bolts needs to be used on your clutch, otherwise too short, too long will cause issues, your clutch won't be loose. Every time I bolt on a new clutch, I always test that the clutch can still move. If the clutch can't move, then it won't be able to work. Just get a nice flat screwdriver like this, stick it into that gap there, and then with your um, engine stopping tool still in place, just turn. And as you see, when I turn it, the clutch opens up nicely. See, so that's what's going to happen inside of your clutch housing. The spring is just going to open up like that, everything is still loose. Everything will still work properly. Next up, we're not going to need the piston locking tool anymore. So you can change it with your spark plug. Um, or you can do that later on. I'm going to put on the, show you how to put on the coil pack now. And then we will swap out the, the engine stopping tool with the spark plug. You get these spaces. Some spaces sits over the the cylinder like that some spaces are just a little round piece of plastic make sure that they're in place because they're going to make sure that the gap that this thing sits straight over the magnets on your flywheel so very loose there's about a millimeter gap before i tighten them up and you grab a business card
just the standard business card and then you lift up your coil pack and stick the business card in underneath both pieces of the coil pack like that next up turn it upside or uh, turn it right side up and push down push down on the coil pack as hard as you can without breaking anything and now you tighten up those bolts that means the gap between your flywheel now and your coil pack is the size of a business card that will give you a really nice spark if your engine bearings are worn out you wanted to use old engine bearings you might get some play on that flywheel which means the flywheel will move up and down and then this gap will not suffice you cannot use a business card for that you'll have to set it with the eye okay once that is in just turn your flywheel and pull the business card out your gap is absolutely perfect now when we remove the piston locking tool you can turn this over like that and it will keep the gap perfect every single time right next up we can stick the spark plug in there nice and tight the spark plug came out of the previous engine it's not a new one all right next up the inlet uh, the intake manifold got a new gap for a uh, new gasket for that please make sure you've got a small hole here at the bottom your manifold will have holes top and bottom that's just so that you can use it vice versa but your gasket sometimes will not some gaskets have two two holes most of them will not make sure that you line the gasket up so that the hole is open here otherwise your carb will not breathe properly and you will have starting issues running issues You also get different materials in these intake manifolds. Um, some of them are hard, some of them are soft. The harder ones tend to handle heat better, so they won't warp after a long, a long extended use, but they are a little bit more brittle. Okay, so just tighten this enough to seat that gasket. If you tighten the harder ones too, too much, you will crack them or break them. The softer ones, tighten them too much, they're soft like rubbery. So they will warp if you tighten them too much. Just a nice hand, hand tight manifold. You will also be able to see leaks if you start it up. And then you can just reset that if need be. Right. There's the engine. Nice compression. Okay. Next up, what we're going to do now is we're going to take the old um, engine parts, the fan cover, the, pos, uh, the pool starter, um the clutch bell and then we're going to put it on a testing station and test if this engine will start up it should there's no issues in here uh, i do recommend that you always put on your clutch bell before you start an engine if you're going to start this engine without that this thing is going to expand and it's going to rip everything apart okay i'll show you guys um once i'm done with that okay i've mounted the clutch bell carrier with the clutch, I've mounted the fan cover, the pull start, just push that in there. I've not put the engine head uh, cover on it for in case we've still got problems, um, which I don't foresee we will have. I'm going to stick it into this bad boy here, this 5T now, and um, I will show you once it's bolted into the car, and then we'll start it up. Alright guys, I've installed the engine onto this uh, car now. We're using the same carb as what was on the 26 with the same settings. What you would want to do now is you want to richen up your high end by one eighth of a turn. Get a little bit more oil and fuel through there. Run the engine a little bit richer for the first tank. It's a brand new motor. All I'm going to do now is I'm going to stick on this uh, tester exhaust of mine. This is not the customer's exhaust. This is just to test that things work and uh, everything's in order. Otherwise, you know, fitting these pro pipes sometimes is problematic and it takes a while and you wear out the gaskets and stuff like that. So it's easy for me to take this box exhaust and just sticking it on and starting the engine up. All right, so we're going to cold start this engine outside just now. And I'm going to richen up the high end needle one eighth of a turn on the carb. <coughs>
right, so this engine sounds very happy. Um, I think we are good to go putting everything on. What I'm going to do now is after it's idled for five minutes, I'm going to check these head bolts and I'm going to see if uh, they're still tight. Maybe they go in a little bit more. Um, make sure that they don't come loose before we put that engine cylinder cover on. And then I'll put the car back together with the, the proper exhaust and happy days. Thanks for watching guys. There it is, all back together, nice and pretty with the pro pipe. Uh, we're going to start it up and let it idle for a bit now and run some heat cycles through it where we run the engine hot, cold, hot, cold to make everything seat nicely before it starts, uh, before we take it out to drive it or before the customer will take it out and drive it. But yeah, it starts pretty easy now.